Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Ah. Says he's in Normandy, but we'll be back a week after. Hello, Tish. Hello, Lily. Hello, Susan. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I had a little trouble. My, my, I can't connect my, uh, see, I've got my uh, helmet here and I can't connect it to, so I put my um, Bluetooth um, AirPod uh, because I don't know for which reason, but my helmet doesn't connect to, 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 to the phone tonight. Mm. <laughs> so I had to make a little of uh, arrangement to be able to do it. So I hope all of you are very well. On the way, we have a, a relaxing tour in Saint Germain des Prés. Um, when we start now, on the way, to finish the tour in uh, 35 40 minutes. Not a very long tour, but I hope you are going to, to enjoy it because um, this is the neighborhood of Paris that I really appreciate and that I really like a lot. So it's not raining. No, no, it's not raining. Um, I worry it could have rained, uh, but finally, uh, no, it didn't. So, um, but it's very, very windy. And let me see if I took my umbrella, by the way, or if I forget it, because I stopped. No, okay, I've got it. Uh, it's very, very windy and all the park. It's good I don't do Luxembourg Garden today or <laughs> under the park because all the gardens are closed due to the wind. Uh, you couldn't, uh, we couldn't um, enter any public garden today because they worry that the branch of uh, the garden may fall down. So, oh, not very good. So, my dear friends, you, tonight we are in Saint Germain, uh, the district of Paris, district number six. And I'm going to show you a little bit um, the Saint Germain <clears throat> and the literature because they are both uh, very linked and they are also, um, it's a part of Paris where artists have been living. Uh, especially in the 1920s, that we call the Roaring Twenties, and in the 50s, uh, that we are more uh, going to be about the um, the famous existen existentialist painters. Okay, so I will start here just a little bit before to show that Saint Germain used to be a very cheap district in Paris. Nowadays, it's very expensive, but at the origin, especially in the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, it was very cheap. Let me show you where I am. I'm in front of that hotel. Whoa, Patrick, what fabulous. Patrick is showing us a hotel. But that hotel is not just a simple hotel. It's named L'Hotel. So the name of the, of the hotel is L'Hotel. Okay, that's like that. If you want to find it on the, I mean, uh, on internet, you have to type L'Hotel with an L. And that hotel, oh, it's quite expensive one because you see it's a five-star hotel. So it doesn't look that expensive like that. But when you look, a five-star located in Saint-Germain. Mm -hmm. So who lived in that hotel? So many famous people. And at the origin, it was not at all a five-star hotel. At the origin, it was a very, very cheap hotel. Yes, five-star, but at the origin, they had no star. And there is somebody who came to live here. So I'm, be, I'm going to try to find who, okay? So he, <clears throat> i give you some information. He's a writer. He's an Irish writer. He's born in Dublin. And uh, then he's going to be accused and he's going to be condemned in England, because uh, he has been con he has been um, been taken being homosexual. Oh, Tish, you even didn't finish that you already give the reply. Absolutely, uh, half an hour trying to be in Siena and Paris, and neither has recorded. Uh, Paris is there, <laughs> so and um, Oscar Wilde, absolutely. And Oscar Wilde, you see here, there's a little uh, panel at the entrance of the hotel. No, 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 Tish, you did exactly what I wanted. I just said, you're great because you just, this, you just said who he was even before I finished to give all the tips. That's what I meant. <laughs> so you see, Oscar Wilde, 
uh, no, that's not the lady. <laughs> the lady comes into the, the video, but I mean, I'm, I'm showing uh, the, uh, the image of Oscar Wilde. He lived in that hotel and he died in that hotel because he died there the 30th November, 1900. And as he was a very poor man, you can imagine that the hotel were not at all a five star at this time being. After that, many other people came to live in that hotel. And you know the famous uh, singer from The Doors, you know who is he? The famous singers from The Door, who is buried in Père Lachaise. This is the end. So who tell me the name of these famous singers from The Doors buried in Paris? In pa yes, yes, Nori, Jim Morrison. Absolutely. So Jim Morrison, later on, when he was in Paris, you know, he came to sleep in Oscar Wilde bedrooms because he was so happy and he was so drunk or maybe more than drunk that night that he jumped by the windows and he felt down from the windows happily for him on the on the roof of a car which was which was parked in the street and he broke the roof of the car he was completely uh high <laughs> well like jim morrison anyway and unfortunately a couple of the letters he's going to die in paris and uh, so you see um that hotel is not just a hotel it's a very very it's expensive but it has got a huge history and just by that hotel in saint germain we've got a cafe restaurant um cafe bar uh, which is called la charrette. Charrette. Charrette means uh, a carriage, but it's also a word which is used by the architect when they have a lot of work to do during the night. They call it I am charrette. It means <clears throat> I'm going to work all the night because I have to finish the project. The name of the hotel is L'Hotel. Thank you, Tish. L'Hotel. And you see here, that cafe is covered by uh, inside painting. Let me show you if I can through the windows, if there is not too uh, reflection. Um, hope I can show you. Let me see if I can show you like that. You see, there is lots of painting on the walls. You distinguish maybe the painting on the walls, okay? Because in fact, this cafe is just by the school of fine art which is just located here. This is the famous Academy of Fine Art. In French, we say National Superior School of Fine Art, the most important school to be and to become an artist in Paris. And so many artists, famous artists, have started their life here, have been studying in that school. And so many try to go, oh, maybe this is the future very famous artists, you know, these two ladies which are crossing the street with a big canvas, you know, who knows, that student from that school, and maybe they have done, a, I would love to see what they have done, I can't see, oh yes, it's a painting, so you see, we still have got uh, lots of uh, people which are uh, learning in that school, that school have got something very specific, you don't go there to, um, to have got class with different teacher, you follow uh, the, the training of one person. That person is going to um, explain you all his art, his way of doing. So you are going to follow the class of a uh, uh, very famous artist, and then you are going to follow a class of another one. So you are going to learn from a master. And uh, you see, this is, this is the school. And look here, we've got a beautiful uh, mosaic. You see, National School of Fine Art. So many, many, many artists. So what I mean by that, we are in the Paris of the literature, but not only of the literature. We are in the Paris of the artists. Meaning by that, you know where the charrette? Oh, Natalie, that's great. So many writers were there, but also many sculptors, many painters, many singers, and they all together have got the community of the artist. They are going to make the community of the artist of Saint-Germain. And at that time, in the end of the 
um, 19th century, in the end of the 1800s, and the beginning of the 20th centuries, what we call the Roaring Twenties, here it's a very cheap place to live. One of the cheapest places to live in Paris with Le Marais. Not at all as it is nowadays. Nowadays it's so expensive to live here, but at that time, not at all. And so it's going to be a community of artists being together, sharing their knowledge, sharing their dreams, sharing their, um, their wills, uh, their wishes. And all together, they are going to create the art of the beginning of the 20th century. You also have to think that Paris, at that time, is a very, very libertine city. You know, if Oscar Wilde came to finish his life in France, it's because he was condemned to jail in England for his homosexuality. And uh, he had a choice. Either you stay in jail in England or you go to exile yourself in France. He decided to come to France. Thanks for us. And uh, he died here. So Paris has no taboo at that time, has no limit. Paris, even though it was Puritan, lots of the part of Paris was also very free-minded. And in the beginning of the 1900s, we are going to, are going to have got here a very important lady, which is going to be a bit like the godmother of all the artists, and the man who is going to be like the godfather uh, who are going to bring the artist here in Paris. That lady, she's named Gertrude Stein, and the man, his name is Rab Hound. And they are going to live like here in the 6th district, just by the Luxembourg Garden. And they are going to welcome uh, and encourage American, English, Irish people to come to live here in Paris, telling them Paris is the city. Of course, the city of love, but also the city of the literature, the city of the freedom, the city of the creativity. Okay, And one of the most famous um, writers who is going to come to live here in Paris, of course, is Ernest Hemingway. And the cafe that I show you now, named Le Pré au Clair, is one of the preferred cafes when Hemingway was living here. Because Ernest Hemingway is going to arrive here at the dawn, I mean, not the dawn, at uh, the beginning of 1920, 1921, okay? He comes to live in Paris, being married. His wife is Harley Richardson. They just married. They're going to get the baby later on. And Harley Richardson has got a little money. And um, Hemingway doesn't have so much. But he is the correspondent of the Toronto Star in Paris. And he gets money being a journalist and publishing little articles in this Toronto star. He doesn't speak French, but Hadley speaks a bit of French. So when they arrive in Paris, they are going to look for a place where they can have people speaking in English. And in fact, in Paris, in this street where we are now, the street is named Rue Jacob. Rue Jacob, Jacob, in the sixth district. In that street, there is a hotel. The hotel in that street is named Hotel d'Angleterre. Hotel from England. And it was the former English embassy. Okay, so you do have the same name, uh, Nathalie, for American than the French. You use charrette like the French. That's great. So that hotel, Hotel d'Angleterre, is just located here with the green, uh, with the flowers on the, on the windows. That hotel used to be the American embassy. And when the American embassy is going to move from here, to the East District of Paris, lots of people who were working in the American embassy are going to be hired by the hotel. So the Hotel d'Angleterre is the place where Hemingway, for the first time he came to live in Paris, he's going to live inside. And that hotel is a very charming hotel. And you still can sleep in the Hemingway's room, you know, because Hemingway's room is the number 14. And you see that the room of the hotel the hotel, uh, it's not uh, cheap, but it's, I mean, for Paris, it's reasonable. You know, you, ca you can get a, a comfort room for 300 and a super room for 330, uh, which is, of course, uh, not cheap. But as I said, uh, for Paris in the 6th district, is not, uh, not that bad. 
And so the room of Hemingway is the number 14. And many people, when they come to Paris, want to sleep in Hemingway's rooms, okay? And you see the hotel is very nice. And it has got, after the entrance, a little garden where you can sit and enjoy Paris, having a little drink or your breakfast, for instance, in the garden without being out of the noise of Paris. So that hotel is going to be used by Hemingway for a couple of months for him to live with Hadley Richardson. After that, they will move elsewhere. But at the origin, that's where they stay. And that hotel is also going to be used by other famous person, for instance, Charles Lindbergh. Yeah, the famous Charles. When he crossed over Atlantic with his plan, the spirit of, uh, how it's called, the spirit of, uh, the spirit of, oh, I forgot, the spirit of something. <laughs> when he crossed, he's going to sleep in that hotel too. You see? And uh, in that street, you've got lots of very uh, weird shop and uh, uh, having uh, things linked to the chemistry. You see? Sinkery. Spirit of Sinkery. Thank you, Laurie. You see? Because you've got, just by here, the School of Medicine. So, in fact, they are going to have here lots of uh, shop or old chemistry, which are proposing old stuff. Um, you see this chemistry here, it's very nice because it's an old-fashioned chemistry. You see with the wooden, inside with the wooden shelves. You see it's not at all modern, <laughs> you can see, uh, with the light on the, on the ceiling. And the School of Medicine is just located here. That School of Medicine it's a type of architecture that we don't have so much in Paris, which is named brutal, brutalism. You see, it looks like a blockhouse. You know, it's like a, it's like a reinforced concrete building, and uh, it's a kind of architecture that we do have a lot. For instance, um, in Russia or in the uh, um, old uh, countries, which were which were. Um, um, invaded by Russia, like uh, Czech Republic or Poland or whatever, because this is very the the the, the Stalin style, and um, which is called brutalism, not very nice style. But in Paris, we don't have so much. So the school of medicine is here, just uh, by the um, that place. So that Rue Jacob is very famous too, because in the Rue Jacob, you have got a place, and I'm going to let you find what's happened here. So that place is here. Nowadays, this place is a part of uh, a school. It has been before that a place where you have got a printer's. And the printer's is named Firmin Dido. I don't know if you know, uh, I really, good, the Barbican in London. So if you know Firmin Dido, it's one of the calligraphy that you can find on Word, you know the Word on the computer. Um, and that has been invented here, Firmin Dido. <laughs> so anyway, that's not what's important. But here we've got a, we've got a, a part of the school, Sciences Po, Sciences Politique, which is a university in Paris, where the students are learning about uh, political science. <clears throat> and here happens something very, very, very important, especially for our American friend. What's happened here? I'm going to try to give you some uh, intel about that, and then you will try to find it, okay? We are the 3rd September 1783. What happened here in Paris, the 3rd of September 1783? Something so important for America. Maybe one of the most important things in the history of America. as important as the 4th of July. And you never feast it, even though you should. So tell me, have you got any idea what's happened the 3rd of September, 1783, here in Paris? Nobody has got any idea? Constitution? No. So I give you names. I give you an English name. 
His name is David Hartley. He's going to be here that day. He's the representative of the King of England. Independence. Absolutely independence, Mel. That day, I show you the plaque. So like that, you can't believe me. That day. Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, John Adams, in the name of the United States of America, David Hartley, in the name of the King of England, have signed the definitive treaty of peace and recognizing the independence of the United States of America. So my friends, your country has been independent, not the 4th of July, but the day you declare it independent, but you are going to have about six years of rule, and your country is going to become independent the 3rd of September, 1783, and the place where the treaty has been signed is right here in Paris, in New Jacob. So next time you come to Paris, <laughs> pay a visit to this place, because that's where your country become the United States of America. Hello, Natalie. So if we've got writers, it means we also have got publisher. That's important, isn't it? Because a writer without a publisher is nothing. And a publisher without writers is nothing either. So they go together and uh, both of them hope the success of the other one. And so we have got lots of bookshops and lots of publishers here. But there is one that I want to show you. Because when we speak about writers, we always think about, well, let's say, Roaring Twenties, Scott Fitzgerald, John Maddox, uh, Ezra Pound, as I said, uh, Ernest Hemingway, of course, and James Joyce, why not? So we always think about men's name. But it's very more difficult, suddenly, if I ask you, give me names of ladies' writers, because we always put in front the men before the ladies. And there is here a publisher which is named Des Femmes, the ladies. This publisher is publishing ladies' writers. And it's a very lovely little place where you've got a kind of tea rooms and a place where you can um, meet and uh, you can have time together. And, uh, oh, okay, I just need to press the car, not to be run down by the car. And then you also have that uh, reading of a book. And you see that shop place here called Des Femmes. And so at the end of this little corridor over there, you see, you've got, it's called Espace des Femmes, the, the place of the women, named Antoine Fouque. And over there, you've got a place where you've got a meeting place where you can go there in the afternoon, where you can read, where you can talk. And also, as I said, where you have got readings of books. And from all over the world, you are going to have got news writers, which are going to be published by this bookshop. You see, so it's called, this is the publisher, Des Femmes, and you see, for instance, that one is Gwen Strauss, and uh, who published a book uh, about uh, the real history of an escape of a group of women which have survived from the uh, Nazi um, time, and uh, they, they say they were nine or you've got, uh, you see again here, uh, books from Are oh, you read it? Oh, that's fine. That's always nice, you know, when we are like that, we are having people who say, oh, I read it. I know that book. <laughs> that's nice. You see here, Hilda Doolittle? Okay, so she's a writer which was um, from the from the Roaring Twenties because she born in um, 1886 and she died in 1961. Okay, and uh, you've got some book here. See, for instance, Luciana Pecker, The Revolution of the Girls. So that the book that you read, there were nine. Yes, HD.
to see from all over the world. And you have got also readings. You see, for instance, here, uh, that lady, Darina Al-Jundi, is going to read the book of Nawel El Saadawi. Or here, Barbara Hendricks read the book of Maya Angelou. So you see, it's like that. Or Dominic Raymond is working uh, the book of with Natalie Cobb. So very interesting shop. And uh, when we hear, if we speak about, about ladies, of course we can speak about writers. Of course, some ladies are important, like uh, Gertrude Stein, but also Sylvia Beach, because it's her who created the first Shakespeare and the Company in Paris. It's her who hosts uh, the writers, the American writers, or the English-speaking writers, when nobody was speaking French in um, in Paris, or very hardly. And, uh, of course, we can speak a bit later on about Anaïs Nin, okay, the first lady who wrote erotic novel, you know, that was so incredible, a lady who dared to write erotic novel, Anaïs Nin. And, uh, you know, she had such a long love story with uh, Henry Miller, if you remember. So, sorry, what did you say, Natalie? Uh, let me see what you said, because I couldn't read it. Natalie, 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 Natalie. So I don't see what you said. <laughs> I just tried to scroll back, but I couldn't. And here, for instance, you've got one of the most famous French writers, which is Marguerite Duras. Marguerite Duras, you've got a movie about her, and you see she lived... Uh, all her life, during the Second World War, she was there, and she lived in that building from 1944, <coughs> sorry, to 1986. Ah, okay. It is. <laughs> Natalie, it's a beautiful name. <laughs> yeah, and you know you've got a song in French, um, which is named Natalie. You have to Google it. It's from a singer named Gilbert Beco. I love that song. It's a song about a Russian lady, Patrick Oso. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and it's called Natalie. And Natalie was his guide when he was in Moscow. <laughs> yes, you like the dogs? <laughs> oh, there's two dogs. Look, from both sides. <laughs> and Marguerite Duras lived in that building at the second floor here. And you see, spent all her life, nearly. I mean, uh, where is the read up? Uh, okay, here. You see, 42, 1996. And her husband, uh, the reason why I'm French, Adi. <laughs> okay, so you have to listen to that music. Natalie. It's a very, very lovely song. It's a, it's a love song. Mm. <laughs> and so we walk gently um, to the Boulevard Saint-Germain, where we are going to uh, find... A very nice place, two nice places, three nice places, which are so famous in Paris. I'm so disappointed to see that sign. Well, maybe some of you are going to say, Patrick, you are not very gentle. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> you are not very gentle because you're criticizing the people which are lying here. You know, because they are lying here to go to a restaurant. And I think that restaurant is not that fantastic. <laughs> so if I was them, I wouldn't make the line here, but I will go more to the Bouillon Chartier, to the Polydor, or to some other restaurant from this neighborhood than lining here to enter that restaurant. You see that long line? From which restaurant are they all lining? It's because it's written in the guidebook. Oh, it's fabulous. If you want to have a nice steak, you have to come here. That restaurant is named L'Entrecote. So that's to have a steak. But to be honest, the beef steak you eat here is not that fabulous. It's good, but it doesn't, I mean, it's not bad, it's good. But it, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be uh, like that. You know, you don't need to make a one hour line to enter to that restaurant. Yes, 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 yes. So like that, you don't have lunch. <laughs> Honestly, 
I will never do that myself. <laughs> but anyway, uh, most of the people who did that are tourists, and in their guidebook, uh, they have been told that it was an absolute fabulous steak, steak French, French steak restaurant. So that's where you have to go. There's also one in the Champs Elysees, by the Champs Elysees. It's as good as that one. But really, I will never, I, I will never advise my guest to go there. Of course, if they want to go there, uh, they are not going to be disappointed because the, the quality of the food is good. But I mean, uh, I much prefer to tell them to go to the Polydor, for instance, which is fabulous. So here we arrive to the Boulevard Saint-Germain. And in the Boulevard Saint-Germain, we are going to reach a place where we have got what we call the Literature Café. These cafés are very important because they have bone, if I can say, <laughs> for a café to bone. Every steak I've had in Paris was excellent. Mm. Yes, the floor, absolutely. The famous floor. It, you said it well, you know, because lots of people say café de floor because it's written café de floor, you see? So the people repeat it, café de floor, which is not incorrect. Hello, Catherine. Which is not incorrect because it's written café de floor. But, uh, in fact, the Parisians don't say café de floor. Uh, we say le floor. Le floor. Okay? And you see the waiters are very traditional way of wearing, you know, with a black jacket, with a black trousers, with a little um, red uh, piece of tissue, you see like that. Very, very traditional. And it's one of the two, three most expensive cafes in Paris. If you think on one hand you've got the Café de Flore, on the other hand you've got Les Deux Magots, and on your third hand, which is very rare, <laughs> but on the third hand you've got the Café de la Paix in front of the opera. And that's absolutely the three most, uh, how can I say, um, posh café in Paris. Oh, yes, 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 I, 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 saw the, uh, I didn't saw the rest, but I knew about the rest of the waiters. That's a very famous competition. No, they do like that. They have got a little tray and they have to run in Paris with their suit of waiters and they have to, to carry the tray. And so it's the one who arrives with the liquid in the tray, making the best time, who is going to be the, the, the winner. Uh, that's a competition which is dating for ages. So the Café de Flore, now there is really posh, you know. Now there's people come here because they want to be seen here. They want to have an Instagram picture here. You know, it's uh, something very, very nice to be here. So people are going to, well, we are in winter, so it's not a long line, but in summer, you see, there's a line here, and then you can have a cafe. But you see the price of the cafe, I don't know if it's written here. Well, here they say tea, but you see the tea here, for instance, if you're just a normal tea is eight euro. And uh, if you take a cafe, it's the same price of that. So, I mean, it's, quite expensive uh, for what you get because the cafe is just normal but of course you have you are happy because you are in one of the most beautiful and famous literature cafe in Paris this cafe cafe de floor is also every year proposing you uh, a price in literature in the past that cafe wasn't expensive you know and all these, um, all these uh, famous writers like uh, André Breton, uh, Apollinaire, uh, uh, or political men like Trotsky, or Chuen Lai, or Jacques Prévert, and all these famous writers were there and were spending time in that cafe. Okay, so that cafe is historical. And as I said, that cafe, the, 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 the first part, the first time of the cafe was in the 1880. And that's funny. Because who born in the 1880s, in that, de in that decade of the 80s? Well, Hemingway born, uh, uh, James Joyce born, uh, Scott Fitzgerald born. So you see, it's like if the cafe and the writers born the same year. Oh, so Lip. Lip is right here. You see, I'm very uh, agile. <laughs> Somebody asked me something and I turn my camera and I show the next, the other side of the street. Uh, it's under renovation, as you can see, there's some scaffolding. But the brewery lips is very famous. So first, it's a brewery, so it's not a cafe, and it's not it's a restaurant, but a restaurant which has been opened by a brewer, 
a man who is uh, making the beer in the east of France. And that brewer named Lip opened a brewery in Paris, which was very, very trendy. At that time, you were opening either a restaurant to drink wine or a brewery to serve beer. So the brewery Lips is very famous because first, Hemingway, Hemingway um, did, um, uh, wrote about that uh, brewery in his book, Movable Fist in Paris, so very famous. And he said that in brewery, he had the best uh, smoke haddock with mashed potatoes he ever had. Well, I don't know if it's part of the French gastronomy, but that's how he qualified it. And it's also the place, the brewery lip, where um, Saint Exupéry drew on the table, on the paper table of that brewery, he drew for the first time the Petit Prince, the little prince, has been for the first time drew here. So, of course, it's also a must be when you are in Paris. A must be if you've got money and time. A part of that, you just can't do like we do now walk in the street, look at it, and go to another one, where you would pay a little bit less. But Café de Flor, Le Flor, or Lip, are very famous. And the third one, of course, is the one which is here, Les Deux Magots. So Les Deux Magots used to be a place which was a silk shop that was in the 19th century. That silk shop has been sold, and they changed it into a café. And they kept inside uh, the place two statues, two Chinese statues, which are in fact a god, two gods. And these gods are named Mago. And so the two gods, the two Mago, because there's two statues, gave the name of the cafe Les Deux Mago, a literature cafe. It's also very, very expensive and very famous to be here, to be seated here, and to spend a little bit of time with, um, how they have got tonight, uh, it's today. You see, we have got every year, we've got a, a price of literature, which is given uh, by um, by that cafe, and it seems that it's today. They give the Peleas uh, Radio Classic Prize, and it seems uh, for uh, the book is Savourer, uh, Savourer les mots. And you see that here you have the, the, the drawing of the two maggots. And you've got here too, you see, the two maggots. So these two statues are inside the restaurant and they are um, they are representing two gods, two Chinese gods. And when they open the restaurant uh, from the former silk shop, uh, they didn't took out the two maggots, which were there for the good health and, uh, and the success of the restaurant and of the silk shop, and they kept it. And that's why the restaurant have got the name of Les Deux Magots, the two maggots. And you know, inside of the restaurant, you see, it's also what we call a literature cafe. So you sit and you've got books on the shelf. And of course, it's very nice to sit here, like in the floor, to be able to have a nice time and a drink or a little collation. Very famous. And to carry on, if you have been eating, if you have been drinking, if you have been some, I don't know, macaron, crepe, uh, ice cream or whatever, you want, of course, to be forgiven for all this sin of greediness. <laughs> so you've got the church of Saint-Germain, which is just the opposite side of the street, one of the most beautiful churches in Paris, coming from the Abbey of Saint-Germain. And there, here you can go and you can make a little prayer to be able to be forgiven for all what you've done before. <laughs> well, you know, uh, don't go too late because the church is closing at 8.30 <laughs> p.m. So, <laughs> but, uh, where shall we eat in the evening? <laughs> so, that's it. If you want to meet with me tonight in Paris, let's go to the Polydor. Uh, we prefer then to go to the Polydor than any other uh, location in Paris. So let's carry on our little trip in Saint-Germain. And to finish our trips, arrive to the Boulevard Saint-Germain. Okay, so the main boulevard where we've got the underground station Saint-Germain. 
just a salad, okay. Patrick course. Okay, so it's not very big, but um, we'd be very happy to welcome you. And, uh, you know, if you want to come, you better go to the countryside house, which is much uh, bigger. And, well, I can welcome more like uh, 40 people. But in Paris, you know, after five, it's going to be a bit of a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, the Church of saint Germain is here. The underground, if you want to come to this neighborhood, you come here, line number four. On your right to the underground Saint Germain, and the entrance on the way out is only one, so it's easy to meet here. It's right here. It's very easy because there is only one, um, as I said, one line. And you see, for the one who are not very familiar with Paris, here you've got the river, here you've got Notre Dame, here you've got the Eiffel Tower, and you see Saint Germain is right here. So here you've got the Latin Quarter with Saint Michel, and the other side of the Latin Quarter, we go to the 6th district, which is Saint-Germain. The croque madame. Oh yes, I have, have to redo a new croque madame because it's a long time I haven't done a, a croque madame. Mm. No, you feel... No, tonight, in fact, at home, I'm going to do a pula. <laughs> what is a pula? In fact, uh, I've bought, the other day in the mountain, I've bought, um, um, I've bought a reblochon, which is a melting cheese. And uh, then I'm going to cook potatoes with uh, onion. And when the onions and the potatoes are going to be well cooked, uh, I'm going to put on the top of it the cheese, the roblochon, that I'm going to cover all the potatoes and the onions with the cheese. And then I'm going to put a cover to that, and I'm going to leave it cooked till the cheese melts inside the potatoes to make the pula. And then that you can serve it with uh, veg veggie or non veggie stuff. It's delicious. I love it a lot myself. So you see now we are in Boulevard Saint-Germain. And that's where we are going to end the tour in one minute. And that I hope you enjoy this little discovery of the district of Saint-Germain with me. Or not maybe a discovery, just a revisit of Saint-Germain. Speaking about what makes Saint-Germain so famous, I mean the place of the literature. Because that's where, in Saint-Germain, we have from the Roaring Twenties, and after that, after the Second World War in the 50s, of course, like Marguerite Duras, but also like Jean-Paul Sartre, also like the very important ladies Simone de Beauvoir, also Juliette Gréco, Boris Vian, and all the jazz men like Miles Davis or Armstrong or whatever. My pleasure, my dear friend. So thank you to have been with me today. Uh, if you enjoy this tour, you are going to have got, you are going to receive in the uh, next week, you will receive my newsletters for um, April and you will see my tour, which are programmed in April that you can follow. And the tour will be published also in the uh, calendars of Together Virtually. And uh, I will be very happy. Uh, to be with you for some more tours in April. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to fly to Rome for the weekend. <laughs> so I will be in Rome, uh, but I won't do any tour in Rome, okay? So uh, take care of yourself. Thank you to have me with me. Of course, if you like it, you always can leave a review and you also can make a donation by the Bay New York Cafe or by the PayPal. Thanks a lot. Yes, Rome. <laughs> so have a great time. See you very, very soon. Good Eastern for all of you. Not too much chocolate. Not too much chocolate. <laughs> I'm eating chocolate and rum. <laughs> That's good, no? <laughs> so take a great care of yourself. And see you uh, maybe not next week. Um, next week or the week after for some more uh, tour on YouTube. Thanks a lot. And I will do some end of April or May. Maybe I will bring you to Egypt with me because I go to Egypt. And maybe I will make a tour in Egypt, in my uh, wife's city in Alexandria. Maybe I will do that. I will see if the time uh, is working well or not. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>